Designing and building a tiny house is an opportunity to experiment with space, to take a relatively compact area and fill it with all of the things that we as humans need to live. And here on the coast of France, we're about to meet a tiny house builder who's really taken that idea to the extreme, building some incredibly innovative and extra small tiny homes on wheels. Hi Thomas, how are Hi, you? Hi Bryce, fine. Lovely to meet you. Welcome, I'm happy to welcome you here. And I am really excited to see your house. Even by tiny house standards, this really is quite little, isn't it? Yeah, it's really, really little. I was trying to make it the most little I can do. First of all, what was it that really made you fall in love with the idea of tiny houses? Mm. I'm not sure. I think the movement was really the thing I loved the most in this idea. And the fact that as I used to work with uh, gypsy people, the fact that we can find the same way of moving with freedom and making this movement in something that really has all the symbolism of our houses. So it's like a bridge between two worlds, the world of who is traveling, uh, most of all with little boxes, and the world of architecture and the symbolism of this little house. It's like if this frame of houses was the essence of the home. So I really love this in the tiny house movement. The design of this tiny house, it really does look like you have paid a lot of attention to the aesthetic of the home. Can you talk to me about how you designed the home? Uh, I think the beginning was um, a trip in Iceland uh, 15 years ago and I really loved the way that when you're arriving in Iceland from the sea with the boat you just see those little houses and they're really really cute and they are communicating with the environment with a, a lot of harmony because uh, it has a great communication with the nature around. So nature is big and you put a house on it, but the house is making the nature more beautiful and the nature makes the house more beautiful. So this simple frame is really inspired from this trip to Iceland. And then it's also inspired by the houses we do have here in Britain. Uh, and it's a traditional architecture and you don't have big windows because you have to be protected from the outside and you need to have this uh, roof, a big slip roof, because it's raining a lot. So this is what was the first influence for designing this house. Actually, the design is evolving with the time because we always do the same house again and again and we're making 40 a year. So every house is changing from the one before and is getting better. So every creativity, it's, it's not just my creativity, it's also the one from everyone who are making it, the guys in the workshop. Uh, now we are 10 people in the workshop and everyone is bringing ideas. So every house is changing and evolving and it's becoming a common design. And it's a great stuff, I think. Yeah. Well, we are here in France in winter <laughs> and it's starting to rain on us, so yeah. should we go inside the house and yes, take a look? please, let's okay. go. Okay, come on. This is absolutely lovely. Thank you. <laughs> it feels better here than outside. It certainly does, especially on a rainy day. It just goes so far to making a tiny house feel especially cozy, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it's true. I, I, I agree with that. And it's also the reason why in traditional architecture here in Brittany, we don't have a lot of uh, windows and the walls are really here to protect you. And uh, I think it's what we can experiment here. I hope so. And it's the better day to experiment it because the weather today is really, really, <laughs> really Britain. So it's kind of cool. It's a rainy day. Definitely is. And stepping inside the house on the interior, it feels a lot bigger than I was expecting. Ah, great. If it does work, I'm really happy, <laughs> actually. It's like the house of uh, Alice in the Wonderful World. 
I don't know the exact word. Alice but it's in like Wonderland. This, yeah, exactly. In Wonderland. Okay. Uh, you don't have the same impression when you're from one side of something on the other side. And it's kind of magical. And I, I do think that this kind of magical stuff is coming from the use of geometry and proportions. I think working on proportions, you can arrive to really great sensations and the size doesn't matter so much. It's the harmony of the global stuff that works and that does count. I completely agree. Like you, I'm a really big fan of the use of sacred geometry in space and working within the proportions of the golden ratio. Can you talk to me about how you've incorporated that into this home? Actually, everything was uh, calculated on this base. So it goes from those sections. Uh, and this is the real structure of the house. Uh, it's not structurated by, by the panel. It's really all this part, which is the structure. And um, so this is a golden section. It's 4 and 2 and 50. And also the windows are calculated like this. It's the reason why they are cut in there to refine this uh, section. And it's also true for the roof. Yeah, you can find it everywhere. It's like a natural uh, sense of proportion. And it's the one you find when you are drawing with your hands. And it's the one you can lose when you are working on computers. Because naturally, if you do a design and you think it's great, if you take the measures, you find most of the times these rules of proportion. So it's a crazy thing, actually. But it's a really, really antique thinking. It's like it was there from a long, long time ago. And you just feel that you are part of it. You don't invent something. You're just making it going on. So what is the size of this tiny house? It's seven and a half on the floor, and Great. it's ten with the loft. That really is compact, isn't it? Yeah. And of course, the great advantage to designing such a compact home is that this is built to travel. Yeah. The idea, the original idea was, actually it was really inspired from the American movement, and it was how to make the same thing that an American can do in the desert with a big truck, how I can do this in little villages in North uh, Europe. So it has to be downsized a lot. And the other thing was how to make it really little and light and making it with natural materials. And this was the hardest part because making something light with plastic, it's easy, it was made for this, but make all the three things light, uh, little, and with natural materials was really hard. And what does this weigh? Uh, this one uh, especially is 1,300 kilos. And tell me about the materials that you've used in the construction of this home to make that possible. So I decided to use the poplar tree. And for a lot of reasons, the first one is the weight. I also could have done this with the red cedar, which is the same weight. But Red Cedar is making 9,000 kilometers to come here, so it was a bit absurd. So I chose a lo um, local tree. The main problem was how to put poplar tree outside. And there's a new way of treating the poplar, which is inspired by this Japanese technique of burning the wood. And in Japan, they do do this with the poplar to make it last. Uh, outside, so you just burn it, in our case in a oven, in their case with a flame, but it's the same technique. You burn it, there's no water anymore inside, so when the wound doesn't have water anymore, it doesn't take back the water. You can just wash it with the rain, it will never absorb the rain uh, anymore. And then working within such a small space and trying to keep everything lightweight and also working within quite a thin framing structure, how have you insulated the home? Yeah, so I talked to you about the structure and insulation is part of the structure. It's like a big sandwich, so you can take off a part of the sandwich. Uh, everything is glued together. So you have this structure made of wood and then a really, really little panel of poplar wood. 
And then you have insulation made of cork. And then you have the, the exterior made of poplar. So you're just making a big sandwich because everything is glued together and worked together that compens the forces. So I'm glad and a bit surprised that it works this, this good. Also because the glue is a natural glue made with the cheese. Really? With the milk. Yes, it's kind. It's a casein. It's a it's a part of the of the milk. Wow! And it's the glue that we used uh, for the planes, the airplanes before the Second World War. And it's a really, really great glue, and it's it's really powerful and really hard, really tough. But we forgot uh, this use because it uh, we have um, chemicals product that just dry faster, but they are not stronger. They are just drying faster. So this is how it works. The way that you've constructed this house is so clever and I can just see how much time and research that you've put into each and every one of the materials that's in here. Now can you talk to me about the design of the interior and how everything is laid out? So now we're arriving to this uh, interior that I really, really love because but first of all, because the light is just coming from one part to another, so even if it's really little, you have this huge sense of luminosity. Also today, with no light outside, you don't feel like you're closed in something in a box. On this part, there's a couch that becomes a bed. Uh, the idea of this one was, well, first of all, having a big couch, because in the tiny house, the couches are always little. And when I'm on the couch, when I come back from work and when I'm working, I really love to have space and to read to relax or to watch a, a movie. So I wanted a really big couch, it was important. And I also wanted that, uh, to propose a solution for someone who can't go on the loft. Because I don't know, if I live inside and I break my leg or I'm sick, for any reason, uh, you, if you have a loft bed, not everyone can go there, so you have to propose a solution, an alternative. So it was important to find a way to have this bed. To have a big couch like this, I had to reduce something else, because it's how it works. So I decided to reduce the bathroom, because of how long you stay in a room in a day, and the bathroom, you don't stay a long time, so in a tiny house, bathroom can't be that big. So there it's the bathroom which is, as I said, really tiny. But as it's tiny, I wanted to make it look good, so I tried this copper uh, shower. I'm oh, really? really proud of. For me especially, there's something about when copper is combined with timber that just looks so good. Yeah, it's so great. I, I, I do agree with that. And I really love the, the material and the way it does become not really, really green, but kind of. And it's, it's like it's living and it's, uh, yeah, I love that. And the way that you've done the shower in here is really interesting as well. This is like a kind of camping shower, isn't it? Yes, as I'm working on the off-grid solutions, last year I was trying a lot of modern solutions and I saw that modern solution can break. And so I'm really inspired now with the, um, the sailing uh, solutions. Uh, this one is just a big bottle of 20 liters of water. So you're making your hot water yourself on the kitchen. So you just have one hot point and it's enough for seven square meters. Mm -hmm. uh, so you put your hot water inside and you just have the space to make the shower. And if you want to take the shower outside, you can do it. If you want to use this bottle with the pressure, you can use it for something else. And then you've got the composting toilet here as well. Yeah, to deal with human waste, which is really, really important in the off-grid uh, direction. And for a couple in this thing, you can change the container like twice a month. And then on this wall over here, you've got the ladder and then all of the storage space. Yes. As I wanted to put a flame in this house, and it's really important for me, like a fireplace, but we can put fire because we are homologated, so it won't be possible to have a real fireplace. Right. So I put this stove, but it's a gas stove. So I put it really in the center of the house to have a, a record of this traditional fireplace. Yeah. And when you're here, where you really suffer the, the cold weather, is when you are working on the computer and you're really 
with the, the, the foot on the floor and you are not moving. I thought it was great to have this fireplace on the knees as a really old man. <laughs> the knees <laughs> not with yet, the heart. Not okay. yet. Uh, so I, I thought it was, uh, it was great. And then we have this great space for putting things. And uh, on this library, which a library is really important, in a tiny house you don't have a lot of things, but you have uh, things important, so you want to see. So I like the idea of a big library because I have all my little objects and few books, but books, which means something. Yeah. And so connected to the library, you have the ladder to go on the loft. So uh, at the end, I have those shelves made uh, like this. It's interesting for the weight of the house. It's great to have some different materials and textiles and it's everything inside. It's, uh, it's also great and cute and I think. I think it's really mm. clever what you've done there. It's almost like a shelf that's been transformed into a hammock for your clothing. Yeah, you so want to sleep inside. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm thinking about making a, a big one and you can just go and make a nap. And then behind me here, we've got the kitchen. And there, there's the kitchen. This one is not the last one because I really, I'm really thinking about make a really big sink because sinks are always really, really little in the tiny houses and mine are really little. And when you leave it, it's not the best. So I think it's really interesting to have a big sink uh, and storage under. And you have pump you, you can use with the foot. And it's great because uh, as we are working on the off-grid living, uh, if you have low possibility to use the water, it's like the same thing that the shower at the end. You want to use less water, so you don't have to have system who consume easily water, because if it's easy, the human just do it. If mm. it's not easy, we don't like to <laughs> things not easy, so we are using true. it less. In case of water or electricity, when you are connected with solar panels, you really have to learn uh, to find a pleasure in using less stuff. So we have here a table that falls down, and inside you can stock stuff. So there you open and you have everything inside. You just put it on the table and then you just put it inside and close it and it's easy. Great idea. Also because in a little house, and you know that you have to deal with the mess. And when you need space uh, in your head to work and to make music and to think, it's easy to just close something and the mess is inside and you don't see it and you can just relax. And this works. And then up here we have the sleeping loft. Yes, with a double bed. Fantastic. And again, it looks super cozy up there. Yes, it is actually. And there's a little window uh, on the side, so you don't feel uh, in a, closed in a little box and you do have a great view. Even if it's not a view on the stars, it's uh, always the same thinking that you want to be protected. So the window is really little, but you can see outside, but you mainly want to not see nothing and just be there and protected. And, and, and then talking about the systems here, Mm. This home is designed to be off the grid, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, most of my clients live off grid. And then I notice as well, you've got a solar panel which is set up outside. Yeah. Where do you keep all of the battery ah, storage and true. where's all that hiding? It's really compact. It's on this way. Oh, right. On this part. So this is where the electric system is. So you have the battery, it's a lithium battery. And uh, you have the system to convert the 12 volts into N30. But we don't use it a lot because all the, the house is working on 12 volt. And this also to reduce the electromagnetic pollution inside the house. And when you are connected on the outside during the winter, for instance, uh, you have a huge uh, power inside. Uh, as it's not on the roof, you can always choose when you put it. So you can mm, make it move with the sun or make the inclination. And with a really little solar panel, you can have a huge uh, capacity production of energy. So the tiny house movement, it's something which is really starting to take off here in France, isn't it? Ah, yes. Really, really, yes. When I start building my first tiny house, mine, 
uh, it was the beginning of the big move of tiny house movement and it's two years now it's becoming really really big really really big in the beginning it was on this direction how to take this uh, tiny house movement to propose uh, an ecological home yeah and it's strange because i don't know for the other countries but uh, i don't think that other countries took the movement for this particular reason it wasn't an, an economic reason at the beginning and it's still not so much an economic reason it much uh, downsizing and a global impact of the humans on the earth. So what was it that really made you want to build tiny houses? It's really little but it's a really huge space of creativity and the, the more you have limits uh, the most you need to be creative so for a creative guy it's a really great funny game to find solution in, so, in, a, in something which is really full of problems to solve. And what does a tiny house like this cost to build? In this one, complete and off-grid cost 45,000 euros. The name Cayute, what does it mean? Ah, Cayute in French, it's a, it's a really weak cabin. <laughs> okay. This is the, the term. And a lot of people told me that it wasn't a good idea to name the company like this. But I don't want to build something serious. Even if the thinking are really serious, at the end, just a little house. I think what you're building here is really special. Working within these very compact dimensions, you've created a really wonderful space in here. And especially what you've been doing by really doing all of this research into the materials and finding very unique and interesting construction methods is really inspiring. Thank you so much for sharing Thank it you. with me. Thank you. Thank you so much. For me, this is a tiny house design that goes right to the heart of what really made me fall in love with tiny houses to begin with. It's so small and economical with the way that the space has been used, and yet it has absolutely everything that we need to live and be happy without being excessive in any way. It's natural, it's beautiful, and the wheels really let this home be a house that you can travel with. It really is such a great build.